Hello guys, and welcome to NGB's day two of the Game of the Year discussions. Day two. No, no, we're not, no, we're not doing Daytona. We're not doing Daytona. No. So, today we're going to discuss the best old game, which is the game that kept us coming mm -hmm. back for more throughout 2016, even though it wasn't released this year. Uh, we've got the best free game, which is the one from mm -hmm. PS Plus, Games of Gold, or any other sort of free-to-play game. Um, and then we've also got the most anticipated for 2017, and we've also got the best surprise. Mm. So let's get on with it, and we're going to go straight for the most anticipated game of 2017. What is it? We're going to talk about the most anticipated game of 2017. Oh, my word. So uh, this one, th there was only really a couple of choices, um, apart from Andy, who chose Zelda. Um, <laughs> don't, you, don't you don't you laugh, mate? Breath of the Wild looks phenomenal. It does. Like to be fair, it does look pretty good, and it's it's one of the reasons I'm interested in getting a Switch. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, we've got uh, we've got Zelda, and then we've got Mass Effect. We've got Shenmue from Robin, which I think is probably a little ambitious it's to very expect ambitious, it next year. Yeah. Um. Then we've got um Horizon. Oh, Horizon does look good. Mm. So. The, the the winner of this one is Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, Mass Effect Andromeda does look incredible, and um, Mass Effect Two still ranks as one of my, my favourite game in the series. Um, and it looks like they've taken some elements from Mass Effect Two and the original and Mass Effect Three, kind of combined a lot of stuff, but also made it not as annoying. I would want to say. I was never a huge Mass Effect fan, I must admit. I'm quite willing to go back and replay them, especially now they're all backwards compatible on Xbox One. And they are indeed free on EA Access. Are they now? They are. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like if you want to go back and play them, you yeah, can do. you can do. Um, but yeah, I, I'm looking forward to Mass Effect Andromeda. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think you are, are you, Jonathan? I haven't played any Mass Effect. Okay. It looks... Is it boring? No, it's pretty good. Is it? Yeah, it's a big RPG, and yeah. I thought I was going to hate it. Yeah. Um, I ended up really enjoying it. Okay, I might give that a go. Yeah. I might look around that. Um, and, yeah, so as I say, Shenmue was the other one that, that kind of got brought up. As I say, that's, it's very ambitious to expect that next yeah. year. I, I can't see that coming out until I'm, 2019. I'm dubious about when we'll see Shenmue. It could potentially turn into the next Last Guardian. It's I the think... remake, though, isn't it? No, no it's Shenmue 3. Shenmue 3. Okay, right. Yeah. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of pissed off people if yes. that happens. But uh, anyway, yeah, so Horizon Zero Dawn is the winner of our most anticipated game of 2017. We all played that at EGX. So we we did. did. Very good. I really enjoyed it. I was yeah. It, mate. Yeah. yeah. It looks fucking incredible as well. Yeah. Um, amazing. And I think a lot of developers are hitting their stride now with the PS4. Um, and you know the, the, the modern consoles, yeah. and I think yeah. the, the results are showing. Like the, the yeah. horizon just looks spectacular. Well, we played it on a standard PS4 as well. It wasn't on a PS4 Pro. Yeah, it yes, looked it did. Yeah. awesome. Yes, it did. So I'm really looking forward to playing Horizon. Yeah, I'm. I'm really, really looking forward to getting my hands on that game. Um, I think the sensible thing to do now would probably just be to cut off the promotion for it in terms of new trailers and new yeah. stuff like that. Just keep pushing the stuff that's already out there I think they've possibly gone a little bit too far with some of the trailers already I've just... not been watching the trailers I'm so I'm trying to keep yeah. myself same yeah. same with Zelda I'm trying to keep myself spoiler free okay. until I play it yeah because um, I know there's stuff that's gonna gonna happen during both of those games that I do not want spoiling yeah um, so that's the most anticipated game um, however we did have a bit of a discussion and we said well the um, this by the way, this is this is just between the four of us in the room rather than everybody on the team. So this is kind of a, a little addendum. Um, we think probably the most anticipated thing. Because I've not got an anticipated game. Have you not? For 2017. No. You're, not, you're not excited about Horizon? I am, but I'm more excited about the next thing that we've been talking about. But that's not a game, Matthew. I know which it's is not. which is very interesting for you. It's because it yeah. you have I'm a history not, of. I'm not anti. What we're going to be, yeah, yeah what we're going to the talk company. About it so, so, yeah, like the, the most anticipated thing for the year is the Nintendo Switch. Yeah. Um, Want one now? Give it to me now. They, they do look pretty cool. The like, concept of it just looks brilliant. Though. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm really intrigued by it. 
Um, you know, Jimmy Fallon obviously got his mitts on it the other week and sort of played through some mm-hmm. uh, some of Zelda. Some Zelda. Um, I, I I'm waiting for that moment when Nintendo fuck it up. January seventeen is when is it January seventeen or twelfth? Twelfth when we find out a bit bit more about it. Yeah, it's. I know the Wii U got a lot of flack because it's crap, and no, it it's not crap. It is it's not crap? It is. Okay, it's, it's not great, is it? It's a great. It's a lovely <laughs> console. The problem is, it didn't have the third or second party support that you expect to find on a console that costs as much as it does. Yeah, yeah what's sure. there? is excellent and what it can do is excellent it didn't entirely meet what i hoped it would do it's which crap. is exactly <laughs> what the switch does which is you can take that second screen and you can take it out with you and carry your game on on the go and i think that was a big a, a big mistake from them to not have focused on it as being a portable device as well as a TV device. I think they didn't want to cannibalize the 3DS sales yeah. with doing that. But I think looking at the way they're marketing the Switch and looking at the way they're moving towards it, uh, the Switch being almost portable first with a TV dock yeah. is probably the right approach to it. And if you can get your AAA quality Nintendo games on a device that you can take out with you and plug into your TV and get 1080p 60 frames a second gameplay on there... I think that's that's a that is a genuine evolution in the way that we play games. I think it's it's an interesting concept, and I th- I think the thing that in, intrigues me about it is Nintendo have always nailed the handhelds. Yes, like the home consoles have been hit or miss. Um, you know, I think everybody that had one loved the GameCube. Um, I think everyone that had a Wii used it for a week. And then gave it up. Bored of it. Um, I think they were hits until the Wii U, surely, weren't they? Like, I think they did. Like, there aren't any bad ones before the Wii U, were there? No. Um, Snes, the Nes, they're all good stuff. The sixty-four, they're all really. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, like all it would, it would, the Wii U. I think they let it all completely down. I think the Wii yeah. U. I think the Wii U. Um, I mean, the GameCube was a fantastic console, but I think it suffered on sales. Yeah, that, that was kind of um, what I was getting at. It was more the sales side of things. And I think this is the same with the Wii U. I think it, it, they were coming off the back of a very strong system with the Wii. And I think the Wii U was seen as an attempt to kind of tap into the hardcore gaming market, but it is a very different community that have very different expectations as to what they get out of their console. Yeah. And for a lot of them, unfortunately, it's can I play Call of Duty on it? If I can't play Call mm. of Duty on it, I'm not interested. Or or of its ilk, you, you, a lot yeah, of people you, do you buy a have, console yeah. for a specific title. And I think the problem is that Nintendo... Um, you buy a Nintendo console to play Nintendo games. Yeah, that's kind of what it's gone down to. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, like the the most anticipated thing of next year mm-hmm. for us is the Nintendo Switch. Okay, so there we have it. Um, the most anticipated game is Horizon Zero Dawn, and the most anticipated thing, I guess, Could is be, yeah. uh, is the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, uh, I think we're all a bit intrigued to see what that's going to be like. Looking forward to that one. Absolutely. Yeah. So next up, we have the best surprise of 2016. So this could have been a game that just came out of nowhere mm-hmm. or a game that had every right to be crap but turned out to be really good. Um, yeah, yeah. There, was quite, yeah. there was quite a few surprises this year, so uh, let's get into uh, it. Yeah. So the best surprise, surprise. of surprise. 2016. Surprise, motherfucker! I right. have a funny feeling that I've got that in the wrong order, but we're going to do it anyway. Okay, we'll just roll Let's with just it. Let's just roll with Let's it. So, go with it. Um, right, the nominations from people have been Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go! Yeah. That was a surprise. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was a fun game. Yeah. That was free. For all of the world. <laughs> <week. laughs> for a lot more like a month, really. A month or two. It was a yeah, lot of right. fun. Okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah. I haven't played it since. Um, it yeah, they did fuck it a bit. Yeah. yeah. But so, it was a good idea. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. we've got Pokemon Go. We've got the Magic Circle, which was... Uh, oh, I remember seeing our review of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It seemed pretty good. Yeah. We've got Doom. 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 Should have been bad is not bad. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the thing. Yeah. Uh, we've got Overcooked. Yeah, that's oh, good. Oh, um, that's amazing. Overcooked. Uh, we have World of Final Fantasy. Right. Uh, we've got FIFA The Journey. Okay. Um, Very specific. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think it, we'll, we'll come on to it. Okay. Um, but basically, we also have Headmaster. Yep. And rounding it out, we've got Serial Cleaner, which is a, a PC game. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Cereal cleaner. Yes. <laughs> I thought Dev did preview of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, right. Let's talk about Pokemon Go, seeing okay. as we've already kind of touched on it. Yeah, I got excited then. Um, I quite enjoyed playing Pokemon Go. It got us out of the house for a bit, and it, yeah. you know, it kind of it, it had problems, and I think that's did. probably why I stopped playing. I stopped playing because it was like Ubisoft made a Pokemon game, because it just get really repetitive over and over and over again. Yeah. And think, it was good yeah. for like that sort of you know sort of month or whatever. And yeah. You kind of think, hey, I'm just doing the same thing over and over again now. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I think I think the thing is they you know obviously they, they were encouraging people to get out and you know go for you know go around the place. Yeah, but of course. Whenever I walked around my village, whenever I walked around town, or whenever I, you know, whenever we went specific places and walked around, we would only ever find Pidgeys, Pidgeys yeah. Rattatas. There was not enough variety of Pokemon around, and you didn't feel so encouraged to Pidgeys. sort of go and look for them because you think I'm just going to find another fucking Eevee. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that that was no, the I thing. Know, that... Eevee's not a bad thing. Eevee. Oh, I got you so guys... many Eevees, mate. Let yeah, me tell you, you. I will sell you, you an Eevee lot, right now. You need a lot of Eevees because Eevees have the potential. They've got to the uh, yeah. Into I've got... multiple different. I had all of the evolutions of us. Well, I was like, I'm done with Eevee's, oh, okay, mate. Yeah. I'm like, let's do something else. Yeah, yeah. Because it's it's only Gen, Eevee, it's man. only Gen One Pokemon, or they've they've just put they've just Gen put in, two in. Yeah, they've just put yeah. Gen Two in. So, so you might and you can get, get a Pikachu with a Santa hat. I know my yeah. missus has got a Pikachu. I'm with a Santa really hat. tempted to go back in just for that, to be honest. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, so yeah, Pokemon Go. Um, I, I I did not expect to see Pokemon on my phone this year. It no. burnt very brightly for a very short amount of time, but like yes. Kurt Cobain. Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Except it didn't get killed by his wife. Um, oh, <laughs> definitely a lie. Definitely a lie. Definitely a lie. Um, so <laughs> Who did 9 11, Ben? Who did 9 we, Well, we've just lost oh, Courtney oh, Love's some, subscriber. Some there. weirdos. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah. Um, right. Jet fuel doesn't match still beams. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, fee for the journey. Um, Gary's uh, put that through and he said basically that he. He didn't expect it to be anywhere near as good as it was. Yeah, that's the single player mode in the new Pepe, yeah, Pepe game, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So, um, it's it's the story of Alex Hunter. That's it. I yeah. think Hunter. Yeah. Hunter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just... I like how it's that question mark at the end of that. Then was it? <laughs> I'm just trying to find Gary's email actually because he's he's um, he's put it through. But like, I think the thing was when it uh, when it got announced, everyone yeah. sort of thought, well. Why? Why is this here? Like, surely it's going to be poorly scripted and just not, not that good. Yeah. Um, so Gary said this was a mode that I was expecting to be welcomed by a corny and poorly scripted story, but it turned out to be well produced and really well written. Yes, it's got cliched moments, but as a first time new mode for the FIFA series, it was a respectable effort that deserves the praise it's got. Mm. With the first year under the belts, next year and its improvements could undoubtedly push this mode to greater heights. And I think that's probably a decent way of summing it up. I think it was a, an interesting step for them to take. Yeah. Um, you know, you choose your your club. Yeah. You play for them a bit. Yeah. And away you go. Mm. Get you with the police. Yeah. Yeah. Like you Do know, hard drugs. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. Um, it, it was a definite surprise that it, it didn't end up being shit. I think it'll be interesting to see how many other sports games follow suit. So NBA has already done it, haven't they? They've already done a story mode. Yes, yeah, oh, Lee joint. Man. That NBA Spike Lee one, which is a Spike Lee joint. Yo. NHL are apparently in thinking are they about considering it as well? doing one as well. Okay. So that'll be interesting how many other sports games yeah. latch on to it. And basically your wrestling games are just one big story mode. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's been the story in general. Though, yeah. Yeah. That is real, it's fake. That's it's not all sport fake. Mode. It's all yeah. fake. It's all fake. Scripted. Just big, um, big men in pants. It's all it is. So anyway. my love for it isn't fake. Screw you guys. <laughs> Get a life. You know. You know what else is fake? Ow. You know what else what? is fake, Andy? Star Wars. And you like Star Wars, don't you? Yeah, but I know. It's I, fake. I thought you were going to say. His, but his I, know, fake, so. I know. wrestling. This <laughs> is not a podcast about whether wrestling is fake or not. No, it's not. Okay, it's we'll, about video games. It'll get cross <laughs> Let's do video <laughs> games. Come off. The so okay, right. So um, so D- Deb has voted for Serial Cleaner. Um, she said that it was um. Uh, it, it might sound strange. The concept is fantastically unique. Your task is to clear up after a rather messy serial killer, uh, which is in no which is no small feat thanks to the many police lurking around with pools of blood and evidence to get rid of. Isn't it basically a reverse Hotline Miami? By serial the sounds killer. of it, yeah, yeah. Like you, you sort of go around and you clean up yeah. after someone after they've killed yeah. them. Um, which, which you know, that sounds really intriguing. It does. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's still in early access, um, but uh, yes, it, it should be. Making its way to a full mm. product soon. Golly's been laughing for five minutes. I have no idea why. <laughs> I'm 
I'm not going to say why. <laughs> okay. I'm really not going to say why. Are you why. still on the wrestling thing? No, no, okay. not at all. Right, fair not enough. At all. Anyway, um, so... <laughs> is Reverse like, Hotline Miami, is that something that you know as a different thing? Don't look it up on Urban <laughs> Dictionary. <laughs> yes. yeah, Stay don't. away from my Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I tried to as a matter, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we also have Overcooked. Um, Robin voted for Overcooked, and he said, That's a lot of fun. "Yeah, it is." Oh, yeah. Um, I think that that was the thing. Like we didn't expect it um, to come out and just go. You know, no so, one suspects the Overcooked Inquisition. No. So he said, "Who would have thought that a cooking game would have been one of the most original, and enjoyable multiplayer experiences of the year?" Cooking Mama didn't set the bar particularly high, but Overcooked manages to take simple recipes and spice. <laughs> Spice things up with uh, dangerous kitchens and timed orders, adding a sense of panic to every level, often with results that might leave you tearing your hair out. But tackling the levels with three other people... Yeah, (laughs) tackling the levels with three other people in the same room is how Overcooked was meant to be played and (coughs) creates some hilarious, unforgettable results. And I think that's fair. Like, we played Overcooked and I nearly punched Andy in the face. And that's before the game. Oh, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Just because he's... Um, I I don't think... I have ever screamed, get me a fucking chopped tomato, you stupid fuck, <laughs> ever before. Um, but Overcooked managed it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's great. Like, it's, it's couch co-op at its absolute best. Um, so, More yeah, of that, this, please. Video yes, games. absolutely. Um, Andy, you said uh, Salt and Sanctuary and The Last yeah. Guardian actually coming out. Yes. Which I think the second one's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you uh, can probably say the same for Final Fantasy Salt and Sanctuary well. was a, a big surprise for me. And I think, do you know, in general, the whole Souls Born universe was a big surprise for me because this was the year that it actually clicked. And I became ever so slightly obsessed with everything vaguely Soulsy for a period of about six months. And I still am. I still dip into Dark Souls 3 and I still dip into Bloodborne quite a lot. And Dark Souls 3 was certainly one of my favourite games of the year. But Salt and Sanctuary was a lovely little surprise while I was waiting for Dark Souls 3 to come out. Yeah. Because it was basically took the Dark Souls formula and applied it to the game series that it is most inspired by, which is Castlevania. Yeah. Um, I mean, the more you play Dark Souls, particularly the first game, the more you realise, hang about, this is actually a proper 3D Castlevania. Okay. Um, with um, branching paths. But the first the first one in the series, probably more so than the later ones, but, you know, it's an interconnected world. It's branching paths. Um, it's got areas that you can go back to and explore with new abilities, with new, you know, new items that you find. It's very obscure in the way that it presents its puzzles to you it's not very obvious what um, what you're supposed to do a lot of the time and salt and sanctuary kind of took that and stuck it onto a 2d um action game and for me um that was a massive surprise that i actually loved that game and got into it because i for years i've been so frustrated with dark souls and i and, still am i'm not i'm not getting into but this was this was the year that it kind of all clicked in and it's now i can see why everybody loves dark souls so much and i i, I i'm a full fully converted dark souls player so you you get it good i get good i got good this year you got good okay. i got good got good Fair enough. I got good. I'm sure I'm not as good as some of the um, slightly more obsessive Dark Souls fans out there, but I certainly, no. I certainly have a lot of fun with it. More obsessive Dark Souls fans, also known as insufferable wankers. Well, there is that. But the community fit not... right in, Andy. <laughs> the community. <laughs> you saw that coming, didn't you? No, I didn't. I didn't know that was. <laughs> that was. Yeah, that was. No, that. that oh was a, dear. That was a mile off. That. Anyway, I thought he was too ill for that kind of shit. But there you go. <laughs> always on the Always, always on. on. He's always that wheel. He's like the he's like the original Xbox One plans. Always on. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, it's good, and it's it's uh, yeah. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I think the Dark Souls community seems to have there. There is still that subset of of, of slightly obnoxious players, but it seems slightly to, it seems to have chilled slightly. Out. <laughs> I think with the um, the kind of rising popularity in it, there seems to be more acceptance that there is now, especially that sort of Bloodborne and Dark Souls 3 are far more accessible games than mm. the other two Dark Souls games ever were. There is now more acceptance that there is a, that it is balanced a bit more towards casual players as well as the hardcore players. Cool. Um, so, I mean, despite talking about Dark Souls there, we were actually talking about Silent Sanctuary. We were talking about Silent Sanctuary. <laughs> but Silent so, Sanctuary, um, I think, goes hand in hand with Dark yeah, Souls. Yeah, so I think that, if that's you fair. enjoy Dark Souls, you should certainly give Silent Sanctuary a go. It's It's got that same bleak, depressing feel of Dark Souls. Yeah. Um, but it's it's in a 2D platform game. Cool. And I just... I, 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 
I think we should probably I should probably just check whether this came out, but I think that one of the one of my disappointments was it was supposed to get a Vita version this year. I think that but I don't it, know it, it either it's... came out or it got cancelled. It was one yeah. of the two. But anyway, so yeah, that's that's that. However, the winner of this category yeah. is Doom. <laughs> Doom! Doom! Do the Doom voice. The Doom Slayer. I'm quite proud of that Doom We've voice. We've touched on Doom already, haven't we? We have. Uh, but it's really good. Yeah. We like to yeah. touch Doom. Yeah, it is. It's, right. Doom's really fucking good. A lot of fun. Big silly bosses. Big demon things. Big guns. Go to hell at one point. You do. Go to literal hell. Yeah. Literal hell. Jeez. Great. Now, so it I like the ending as well. Doom. It's good. What? Basically I've, not, I've yet to finish it, yeah. so don't spoil it for me. It's a good ending. It's, it's not cool. a very long ending. It's a good ending. Cool. Well, it, it ends. Well, it ends. But I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, the, the ending is the end. Well, no, Benjamin. <laughs> what I mean is, it's no, it's no like sort of like half an hour cutscene. It's, it's uh, just okay. like, you know, like a minute. There you go. It's Fair enough. Yeah. But like, yeah, and I think the reason this has hit, like, I think, myself uh, yeah it was me you and Matt voted for it as the most surprising yeah. game um, thanks Matt I think right. I think um, we, we all said the same thing yeah. it was it, it was way way better than it had any right to be I thought it was going to be terrible yeah as a lot of people did because of the uh, Bethesda's interesting review policy they've yeah, I mean, there's, there was that, and also yeah. the. Um, I thought they'd just update it from what it was. Well, this is the thing. Like, they, they you know, they, they had a. Um, it's it had a troubled development history. Yeah. So, um, there is a fantastic documentary series up at the moment by Danny O'Dwyer actually about the history of of this project. Not Danny Dyer. No, not Danny Dyer. So, um, yeah, like Doom started Doom off. It. It, it started up as Doom Four. Um, which kind of was taking a more Call of Duty esque narrative oh, right. driven like story way and, and you know about, about doing things yeah. and like you had your reloading you had your aim down sights and it was set on Earth during this big hell invasion yeah um, and they just went fuck that well it, it got to a point and they said well okay we've we've slightly fucked this yeah and they just turned around and went you know what let's let's make this fun yeah um, make Doom great again. Um, so they they sat and they, you know, they they went through everything and they said okay cool right well what do we do for like the, the tone and everything and it's so self aware huh. it's so well put together that I I couldn't I I think the whole time I was playing it I just had a massive smile on my face it's so simple it's just like a, such a simple joy to play yeah there's no thought required no. But in and a good way. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I think the thing is, like they said, uh, it, they wanted it to be accessible. Yeah. And you start that game off lying on a sarcophagus. Yeah. You get off it, there's a demon coming towards you, you grab the demon's head, you slam it into the side of the so- uh, sarcophagus, you jump off it, and you go along and shoot something. Yeah. Within 30 seconds, you're shooting demons. Yeah. It's perfect. It's not messing around. No. no. It is the diehard of games. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actually, it looks like it's a bit of you know dumb fun, but actually it's quite layered and quite you know detailed and good analogy, Matthew. Yeah, oh, no. take the rest of the day off. Ah, oh, awesome. <laughs> drop the mic. <laughs> Don't drop the mic; it's expensive. <laughs> um, so yeah, like Doom, uh, worthy winner of the best surprise. And there we go. The best surprise of 2016 was Doom. 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 You're right. Do you need a throat sweet or something? I'm fine. Yeah. Yes. Is that your Doom voice? It is. Not your the, Batman voice? The Doom Slayer. The Doom Slayer. I quite like that. Doom was amazing. I, it's a really good game, and it's better than it had any right to be. Still not played it. It's really good. I need to. You do. Yeah. Anyway, the next one um, is the best old game. So Is that me? Yes. I'm the oldest. You are the oldest. I'm the oldest. You are the oldest. For some reason, that's a good thing. Um, yeah, the best, the best old game. Um, the best old game is essentially a game that came out before this year that we've played a lot this year. That so. kind of does suggest that it's old. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. know, like we, we... Every time in Game of the Year you overlook stuff Yeah. if it doesn't come out this year. So we decided to, to throw this category into the mix. Mm. Um, this one was quite hotly, uh, hotly contested. So uh, here we go. Was it Manic Miner? No. Okay. Moving on, uh, we're going to talk about the best old game. So this is a game that didn't come out this year. But we played a lot of and feel that it deserves some kind of mention yeah. here. So um, quite a few. I don't think there was a consensus on this one. Everybody voted for something different. Um, so basically, I threw a tantrum and I got my way. 
Sort of, and yeah. now it's going to be Rocket League. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you, threw, you threw a tantrum. <laughs> That's unheard of. Anyway, yeah. Mardi, I'm a professional. So, so basically, um, we'll run down the list. Matt, you okay. chose Until Dawn. Yeah. Nick chose Destiny. Gary chose Battlefront. Um, Aaron chose The Witcher 3. Deb chose Dragon Age Inquisition. I believe Robin chose Red Dead Redemption. Johnny, you chose Rocket League. Rocket League. Did you choose Rocket League, Johnny? Let me tell you what the best game of last year was. Rocket League. It wasn't. Okay. It was. It was our number four, I think. I yeah, I have, I have issues with that. That's before my time. Carry on, website, Benjamin. But... Anyway, um, uh, Damo voted for Skyrim. Uh, Charles voted for CSGO. You voted for Bloodborne, Andy. Of course I did, yeah. Um, Neves voted for GTA Five, and I said Rainbow Six Siege. And I still think Rainbow Six Siege should take this category because it's had the best support of any game this year, in my opinion. It's got free operators, it's got free maps, it's got everything has been free and they've tweaked it and they've tuned it to such a point. No flying cars though, mate. No, but it's Or big footballs. No. Same. Anyway, so um yeah, like I, I think I did enjoy Rocket League and I still do enjoy Rocket League. I'm still shit at it. Yeah. I'll say. That's not the point though, is it? No, it's still fun. It's not the winning, it's the taking. <coughs> no, it's part. all it's always yeah. the winning. It's all about the winning. That's what my mum used to tell me. <laughs> all about the women. Um women. So, women? Winning. All about the beast. <laughs> <laughs> so um so yeah, like I think that there's a there's a good range of, of games in that yeah. list. And I think the the interesting thing is that usually um, when we discuss this sort of stuff, there is a game that's kind of it, there is a consensus amongst everybody that says like this is this is what's going on. This is the this is the best game that you know we that we played this year that didn't necessarily come out this year. Um, and I think yeah, the um, the the choice of Rocket League, although it has sort of been achieved with Johnny throwing a tantrum, um, I think it's it's a fair win. Yes, for Rocket League. Justice for Rocket League. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, there we go. The GFRL. best. The best old game. Speaking about Danny D- Danny O'Dwyer's <laughs> Danny uh, no clip documentary. There's a very good one about Rocket League too. Yes, that two was the fir- that was the first, first one. That he did. One, yeah. yeah, it's very good. So uh, the first one was a two part Rocket League one. The second one was a three part Doom one. Yeah, and they're really good. Um, so yeah, Rocket League uh, is uh, the winner of our best old game of 2016. And there we go. Rocket League, deserving. Um, was a very good game. Good game. It was a very Solid good game. game, and it's had a lot of support this year. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Cyanix have done a really good job with it. So, Rocket League is our best old game. Um, so the next one is the best free game, and I say free because they're not entirely free. No, you pay for your subscriptions. So yeah. it's the best game that we've had from Games with Gold or PS Plus. Um, Throughout 2016. Mm. Not so, ones that you found that didn't have a security tag on an HMV. No, they're, they're stolen. But it, you need to... That's... You need to... Right, okay, cool. Well, I'm going to go and shit. bail Andy out, and uh, we'll talk about the, the uh, best free game. That's what you meant when you said free. Um, next up, we've got the best free game. So this is the best game that uh, people have taken from PS Plus or Xbox Live Games with Gold mm-hmm. or just a free-to-play game. Yeah. In general, so there were there were two standouts for this one, um, but we'll, again, we'll run through them. We've got Transformers Devastation. Yep. Good. We've got Journey. We've got Gone Home. We've got The Secret of Monkey Island. We've got Broforce. And we've got Paragon, and we've got Hearthstone and Sleeping Dogs. So, I think that Transformers Devastation was in with a good shout. That was your choice. Oh yeah. Yep. Um, and then we've got uh, Sleeping Dogs, which was your choice, Andy. Yep. Um, I never knew that was free. When was that free? It was free on, Xbox, on Live. Xbox Live. Xbox Live. Yeah. Oh, it's the uh, re- redo that came out earlier this year or late uh, last late year? Late last year. Late last year, yeah. Yeah, so that but, was uh, Sleeping Dogs. I mean, I, I put that down because I loved it when it came out on PS3. Um, for, it came out a few on PlayStation Network a few years back, didn't it? For, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's... It's good. Um, yeah. You know, the Sleeping Dogs is great. Mm. Johnny, you said Broforce. I said Broforce. Why did you say Broforce? I think Broforce was probably the first game we did as our little couch potato segment for, it our, was, yeah. for our show. It was a lot of fun. I think that's a good representation of how good it is. 
by seeing how bad that segment is because <laughs> we're just all yelling over each other. No one's concentrating. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, it's great fun. It is a lot of fun. And like, it's a good game. I mean, single player is fine. It's like a good little arcade shooter. Uh, but if you get your, your mates around, your friends, uh, and play all together, a lot of fun. A lot of fun references to the old uh, 80s action films, mm. 90s action films. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to see in it as well. Mm. Very yeah. Yeah. And just as an aside for that, we are resurrecting the show in the new year as well. We are, yes. So there will be a return to that. Yeah. So um, what else have we got here? Best free game. We've got The Secret of Monkey Island. So Robin said that the single greatest adventure game ever made was yeah. recently made free with Games of Gold. Um, can't think of a better title to be shared with the masses for free. An unmatched combination of comedy, pirating adventures and puzzling, Monkey Island created an original and thoroughly entertaining game world that would spawn four sequels and a thousand imitators uh, and kickstart the careers of the host of the 90s greatest game designers. Lasting influence and enduring quality of the game makes its free release one of the best deals of the year. And I'd probably agree. Yeah, do you know what? Uh, yeah, I, I, it's, I, it's a good game. I love Sleeping Dogs, but can I change it for Secret of Monkey Island? You can do. It's okay. not going to change the outcome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, a couple of people voted for Gone Home um, as well. So Deb said about Gone Home that uh, it was brought to the attention through the PlayStation Plus subscription back in June. Knew nothing about it but uh, from its past release, so standing on the porch of my family home after a long trip away was daunting to say the least, with one hell of a storming, storm raging on, a dark empty house awaiting my exploration. I admit I was a bit scared as to what mystery lie ahead. As I looked for clues, I quickly turned on every light that I could, slowly peering around the corners. The story was emotional, and while I, while I both wanted and didn't want it to happen, yes, it made a jump. And I think... Yeah, like, Gone Home is one of those games that splits people down the middle. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I probably fall on the side of enjoying it. I think it's it's pretty good. Um, I, I still haven't played it all the way through. No, no. I think it's one of those where you wind yourself up over it more and more. It's kind of put, put out there as this horror, um, like a horror game, mm. but it's not. Nothing's actually mm. there to scare you. Um, but the, the winner of the category um, is Journey. Um, I think Journey is is, is a well-deserved winner. I mean, it's not the first time it's been given away in PlayStation Plus either, is it? It's it's had a couple of um, drops over oh, really? the years. Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure it was quite an early... I don't think it was. Was it not? I think I think this is the. It, it's I only think... been PS Plus once. Okay. Because um, I thought, I it, you, I thought you... it hit when it was on PS3. I thought it was included in PS Plus. No, once. I think what you might be thinking of is if you bought it on the PS3 when it got remastered for the PS4. Maybe. Yeah. It, it was free for you if you uh, bought the maybe, PS3 yeah, yeah, version. Yeah, yeah. But then they just made it free for everybody okay. a bit later on. And yeah, Journey is is fantastic. It is a we've great game, we've yeah. talked about it countless times in the past. Um, it is. It's an experience that you really should play if you haven't already. Um, so that is the best free game that came out this year um, on the PlayStation Plus Games with Gold service. Cool. There we go. Journey was the best free game from uh, PS Plus. I, mean, I didn't nick that one. No, you didn't. Okay. You got that one legit. Yeah, free. legit. Um, so yeah, Journey, um, amazing game. It is a very it's, good game. It was free this year, so hmm. congrats. Um, right, that's going to do us for day two. Uh, if you join us tomorrow, we're going to go through the ones that didn't quite make the cut. So the best of the rest, probably the best way to look at yeah. it. Yeah. Um, thank you for joining us, guys, and we'll see you tomorrow.